autumn acorn knits. My name is Judy and this is a vlog about the first week of February. every morning is to have coffee, breakfast, and then just set the mood. I purchased this beautiful handmade button and this acorn sun catcher at a local shop in the town next to us. I love them so much. I've been doing some more thrifting lately, which is just one of my favorite things to do in my spare time. And I found this beautiful sweater. It's cozy, it's oversized, buttons down the back, which is perfect, and it's gray. I'm really trying to downsize my wardrobe and only have certain colors. Grays, creams, blacks, pale pinks, and sometimes a rust. Those are the colors I really want to stick with. I thought I would start sharing um, all of my consignment store and thrift store finds from now on. I love to see other podcasters do that, so I hope you'll enjoy it as well. I was inspired by my friend Angela to try my hand at journaling and keeping like a bullet journal. So I took an old notebook because I couldn't bear to buy something new when I already had this. And I just put tape on the edges to reinforce it. And then every day I write down at least three things and I try to get them completed. Taking me high, taking 
I'm really happy with the way my hydrangea stripes scrappy blanket is coming out. I've gotten a lot more done on it than I thought I would, considering behind the scenes I've been working on several other projects as well. But I'm just so happy with the more muted colors that I'm using in this one. The last one I made is beautiful too, and I'll show it to you on the next, uh, next time I can. But the colors were brighter and more intense and just not as much my style. These are definitely my style. This is the color that I'm adding every 10 rows to the blanket, just so that it has something to sort of pull it all together. And um, this was a color that I had dyed when I first started dyeing. In the next scene, you'll see a time-lapse video of me organizing my craft room. And then you'll see a final reveal at the end. So I thought it would be fun to just give you a little tour of my craft loft I've just redecorated. So this is as you walk up, you see the poof that I crocheted for my cat, Meryl. There's a window here and it overlooks the woods. And right now it's actually like raining ice. This is a plant that I got from my mom after she passed and I'm still keeping it alive, which I'm really happy about. There's some shawl kits for sale. And then as we walk over here, this is where I have been able to put all of my yarn. This is not all personal yarn. This is also yarn for sale. So I have it uh, separated, but the top here has um, my first hand spun and my second hand spun, my third hand spun, things like that. And then gifts that were given to me of other beautiful hand spun yarn. 
There's some other wonderful gifts. And then my giant magic ball of, that's all um, like bulky weight yarn. And then all the different types of yarn. I have it arranged in a certain way. Only I know, I guess. It is organized, believe it or not. This is all yarn for sale. Um, that right there is all roving yarn, and this is like bulky, um, worsted to bulky, and these are more um, of my commercial, not, not so great yarns, but they're still needed. This is a lamp that I just got from Joe's mom who just passed away. So, um, more yarn up for grabs. And then this basket here is simply leftover scraps of all different yarns, types of yarns, all different weights. There's a window that overlooks the um, woodshed. Um, there's my ring light. This is a more storage, mainly like office supplies. This is where I copy. These are all of my stitch markers and progress keepers. I have way too many, but it's because I make them as well. That's that's why. Um, there is another window, which is really nice to have because it's right next to my um, sitting chair where I create things and design patterns. Mara likes it too. This is also where I keep my diffuser, my oils. Um, any projects that I have going on are usually close by. This is where I keep the water for my diffuser and I made this cute little cozy for it. I have a bulletin board up there, I have a mirror, I have some nice twinkle lights, and again, Mara likes to look out the window. Here I have storage uh, for all types of things, office supplies, office supplies. Um, these are all progress keepers uh, that I include with yarn purchases. They're just full drawers. Well, um, there's my Chagu needles. There's my Pendleton double pointed needle case. This was a cheaper set of interchangeables that I had been gifted a while back. And the same with these just mainly use my chagos. Um, books on um, being director of a preschool, which I once was, and this book, which I probably am going to need to start reading again. I didn't get very far, as you can see, uh, but I just found out that I have pre-diabetes, so I definitely need to start eating better. And Meryl really likes these drawers as well apparently so I won't show you what's in the rest I don't want to disturb the princess this is yarn that's being sent off to a lucky podcast viewer because she won it and I promise I will get that out next week um, candle incense and I forget what those are called they smell nice um, then I have like a dressmaker's mannequin, and right now I have two shawls on there. One that was knit for me out of the Autumn Acorn yarn by Skelnerina Knits. And this one, which is um, mohair, I took all of these squares uh, and I naturally dyed them. And the, each was, mohair was added to each square. And then I sewed them all together, and then I knit an, a lining in just this tan. And it's an infinity scarf, and it's so warm and cozy and squishy and beautiful that right now, this is how, this is how I choose to enjoy it, just having it so that I can look at it, so. Over here in this corner, this is really new because this was all just bins, plastic bins and storage, and it was really hard to get through and have a clear walkway. And now that all the yarn is in one location, which is behind me here, 
I no longer have to have it all stuffed in here. I used to keep all of the for sale yarns in this cabinet. By the way, there's an old, old basket that I got at a consignment thrift store. And that's my wooden um, ball winder that Joe gifted me. Anyway, now in this uh, cupboard, I have all of my books. This is all my watercolor painting supplies. Um, this is all my designing notebooks, etc. Some bear yarn. Down here I have all knitting and crocheting books and I've allotted this bunch here to be given away as part of um, the podcast giveaways. And they're really good books. I just, I've had them enough and I don't use them much. Down there are all of my printed patterns because I just have this habit that I need to have my pattern printed out so that I can write on it if I want to, etc. And I just, that's how I learn. Up here I have a little uh, basket, it has patterns down here. Oh, this beautiful pattern that I purchased on making this life, life like cat. Um, and then I have up here a bunch of uh, beeswax candles. And I use those for my tea light. I think it has one in there now. So yeah, this little desk area makes perfect sense because it doesn't take up, before what would happen is because of the walls slanting down like they do here, I would bump my head and stuff. But if I'm just sitting at a desk, there's plenty of head clearance there. I'm not gonna hurt anything. And it's just so convenient the way that desk just fits back there. Perfectly. The only thing missing is lighting. I'm gonna have to figure out some kind of lighting. Now I do still have this area, which I'm not happy about. And I will figure something out where it just looks better. It's organized. I know, you know, I know what's in everything. These bins are crucial. Oh dear, and I just see more yarn that I didn't put away. So that top bin will be leaving. Um, yeah, but anyway, we also have all of our files back there for my business and, and Joe's files. And then some other projects and lots and lots of uh, knitting needles and things. But it's a work in progress. Over here you have this the giant blanket that I knit a couple years ago. And then the one that I'm still working on out of that gorgeous New Zealand um, roving that's been processed naturally so that it won't pill. It's beautiful yarn. This little carpet I had crocheted a while back out of some rope. I got into that for a while. Makes great baskets too. Um, but then, yep, you can see the view from here of the rest of the craft area. Here I have a little chair that you can't really sit on because it's kind of rickety, but it, I love it. It was on the side of the road. And there's my um, hydrangea stripes blanket that I work on every so often. It's, it's really getting big, quick. And this I call my shipping station. It's just a little area here um, where I can ship all my orders off. And down here underneath are all the things I need to create my knitting and crocheting kits. I just got some beautiful new bags that are nice and thick. And down there are the sock blockers that I sell and then all of the wooden knitting needles and crochet hooks that I sell. And that brings us right around to where, where you come up into the craft loft and right where we started from again. So I hope you enjoyed this little tour. I had fun showing you around. I'm really happy that for the first time, I feel truly organized and I feel like it'll be so easy now to go over and to my yarn stash and just look for colors that inspire me. I have to say though, guys, this doesn't feel good to have this much yarn. And the only reason I do is because I'm a yarn dyer and I can take advantage of the lower cost, but it's too much. I am overwhelmed looking at it. Um, so it's, I will definitely need to whittle this down. My goal this year is to see how much of this yarn I can use up 
without buying anything new. And that's hard when you're thinking about sweater projects, etc. But I think I can do it. I don't have a ton of sweater quantities, but I still think with what I have, I can make some beautiful pieces in 2020. So stay tuned for that. Knitting at the doctor's office. How many of you bring your knitting to your appointments? I have to have something to do while I'm waiting. It's been a real lifesaver at times. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll follow me on Instagram. And if you liked this video, please press like and subscribe. Thank you and I'll see you next time. Thank you.